Thank you so much for joining us for CBN News. Watch MF from Graham. Ahead today, a look at why Israel carried out that terrorist operation earlier this week. We're going to take you behind the scenes and show you what it was like for Israelis who live on the front lines of terrorism. Although many states have legalized the use of marijuana, experts warn today's version can be very dangerous. We'll explain what can happen. It's called the Bible Project. We're going to show you how videos are motivating millions around the world to read and understand God's word and an update from actor Jim Caviezel on the upcoming sequel to The Passion of the Christ, which explores the resurrection of Jesus. All those stories and more are ahead for you today on CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. We begin this half hour with this week's Israeli military operation against terrorists in the Palestinian city of Jenin. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres is issuing a rare condemnation of Israel on Thursday, saying they used excessive force. Israel felt the operation was necessary, and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu promised to carry out similar actions if needed. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl takes us to the site of a recent terrorist attack and shows us how the Israelis living in the biblical heartland are on the front lines. Israelis living in Judea and Samaria tell CBN News they have a good life most of the time. I can say we are living in a dream because every step we do, every morning when we wake up, we wake up in, in the land of the Bible. We see the prophecy coming alive. And like, the, like those times, we have challenges here. Recently, especially over the last two weeks, those challenges include an increase in terror attacks. Much of the world calls this territory the West Bank, although in the Bible, God gave it to the tribe of Benjamin. Israel Gantz, head of the Benjamin Regional Council here, says this time is no different from any other in Jewish history. In the last two weeks, only in Benjamin, we had 200 terror attacks. I mean, we had five uh, uh, shooting terror attack, and we have 200 stoning a mold of cocktail. Of course, you heard about the uh, uh, terrible terror attack that we had uh, two weeks ago in a gas station near uh, Ali. The gas station and the hummus restaurant behind me are the site of one of the most recent terror attacks against Israelis in Judea and Samaria. Two terrorists murdered four Israeli men, and one of them was an employee of Hummus Eliyahu. So I called up my son, Eitan, who works here at Homo Eliyahu, and he didn't answer his phone. I think it was maybe a minute, a minute and a half, but it was the longest minute and a half of my life. And when I finally, he finally answered, I realized that he's okay, but someone else was killed. Eliana Passantine, a mother of eight, lives here and works for the regional council. While her 15-year-old son, Eitan, survived the attack, his friend Alicia did not. On one hand, I'm so grateful he's okay and, 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 and alive, but we lost a lot of good people here. It was a warm and pleasant afternoon. Two terrorists arrived here in a stolen car with yellow Israeli plates. They opened fire just in front of the hummus restaurant with two M16 rifles. Restaurant owner Aviad Gizbar was away on reserve duty when the attack happened. It was our fortune that the place was empty. Ten minutes earlier, the place was bursting with a party. There by the flag of Eli, the terrorists got out of the car. I was inside. I heard shooting and looked. 19-year-old Elkana Sadia was managing the restaurant that day. I saw Nachman here, Alicia and Masood. Then the first paramedic arrived to assess the situation inside. Sadia showed us where some of the bullets hit and how they penetrated into the restaurant. I was standing here behind the counter preparing hummus, so I crouched down here. Gizbar told us there hasn't been a deadly terror attack in the area of Eli for 20 years. It's sad. I'm really sad all the time, but now we have a different task to try to go forward as much as possible. Gantz believes Israel must never give in to terrorism and supports military operations like the one in Jenin. We have to defeat the terror. For me, the operation in Jenin is only the beginning. I'm sure it will be continuous for this process. He says he can feel the prayers and support of people around the world. And Israel, he says, is fighting the terror battle not only for itself, but to protect the rest of the world. We will be here, we'll deepen our roots, and we will be your ambassadors here in the biblical land. Julie Stahl, Benjamin Region, Samaria.
And you can see more news from the Middle East on Jerusalem Dateline. It airs on the CBN News Channel this evening at 8.30 Eastern. You can also watch it on the CBN News app or simply tune in to YouTube. Here at home, record high temperatures are sweeping the nation, leaving millions under dangerous heat warnings. At least 14 people have died from the heat. Some climate researchers claim the Earth has surpassed its highest temperatures on record. CBN's Brody Carter has this story. Hotter than the 4th of July is no longer just a catchphrase. Climate researchers say Tuesday was the hottest day on record worldwide, with those numbers holding steady into Wednesday. And June was the hottest month for the globe. It's been getting hotter and hotter every year, and every year we're breaking, breaking new records. Here at home, record high temperatures from Washington State to Texas to Florida have scientists sounding the alarm. It's a little too hot here, like I'm going to pass out. In the West, heat advisories threaten at least six states. This video shows two hikers near Tucson being airlifted to the hospital by Border Patrol agents. One hiker suffering extreme heat stress, the other losing consciousness in triple-digit temps. At 130 degrees, you can get a second-degree burn within one minute. Today, high temps in the 90s or hotter forecasted from Maine to Miami. Florida teams use thermal imaging to show how quickly surfaces can become dangerous to the skin. It's a little scary to hear it, kind of knowing the threats that type of heat imposes on, on communities. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association recognizes the rising temps, but one expert says scientists generally use much longer measurements, months, years, and decades, to track the Earth's warming. However, it is an indication for some that climate change is reaching uncharted territory, with El Nino taking blame. But then, yes, it is occurring earlier than we would expect and we would expect next year to be warmer still uh, in response to that El Nino and it looks like it might be quite a strong El Nino. Scientists say ghost forests are one of the most dramatic impacts from a warming climate where coastal forests are dying as sea levels rise rapidly and hundreds of thousands of acres of forest along the U.S. coastline are expected to share this fate. Brody Carter, CBN News. A disturbing attack on a church in California. Los Angeles police are investigating a possible hate crime in the neighborhood of Silmar after vandals burned three crosses outside Silmar Christian Fellowship Church Thursday morning. The crosses belong to the church and sit in front of the building. Pastor Pierre Howard noted the congregation is diverse with white, Hispanic, and black members saying, quote, I think it's a hate crime of someone who hates God. He also called on those who set the fires to seek God for forgiveness. U.S. officials granted full approval to a closely watched Alzheimer's drug Thursday. The Food and Drug Administration endorsed the drug called Lukembi for patients with mild dementia and other symptoms caused by early Alzheimer's disease. It is the first medicine that has been convincingly shown to modestly slow the cognitive decline from Alzheimer's. The government's approval clears the way for Medicare and other insurance plans to begin covering the intravenous treatment and coverage is important because the drug costs about $26,500 a year. Like other Alzheimer's drugs that target plaque, Lukimbi could have side effects including brain swelling and bleeding, which can be dangerous in rare cases. Coming up, hallucinations, delusions, and paranoia. Today's super strong marijuana is, is causing cannabis-induced cannabis psychosis in its users. Health experts sound the alarm on the dangers. We've got the story for you when we come back. Stay with us. in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment you won't find anywhere else the cbn news channel a perspective you can trust enjoy credible news reporting from around the world discover inspiring programs and stories of hope all in one place from a christian perspective the cbn news channel a perspective you can trust to watch the cbn news channel download the app or visit cbnnewschannel.com Losing touch with reality, that's what happened to one marijuana user who had to be hospitalized for cannabis-induced psychosis. 
He's not alone. The high potency of today's marijuana has been directly linked to greater risk of mental illness and addiction. This has health, health experts on high alert. Lori Johnson warns us of the dangers. Zach Plant started using marijuana to ease the stress in his life. Like I would much rather be high than, than be sober. Months later, he entered the hospital for cannabis-induced psychosis because his marijuana use led Zach to lose touch with reality while experiencing hallucinations, delusions, and paranoia. I had, you know, thoughts of other people wanting to hurt me, uh, thoughts of um, the only way of, you know, being safe was to, to end my own life. While his symptoms didn't last, doctors gave Zach a warning. If you smoke marijuana again, there's a chance that you don't come out of psychosis. You go back into it and, you, and, your, and your brain may never recover. Up until about 20 years ago, most marijuana contained comparatively low levels of THC, the ingredient that makes users high. Now that concentration can be 10 times greater, 30% THC, and in some cases, much more. You can go to a, you know, a gas station now um, where I live and you will find a, a vape pen that uh, has, we call them carts or, you know, dab pens. And um, it will have like 50 times the potency of just smoking regular marijuana. New research shows today's high potency marijuana can be directly linked to a greater risk of mental illness and addiction. Marijuana induced psychosis and, and marijuana induced schizophrenia is the single most well-replicated finding in schizophrenia research today. And this super strong pot is widely available. The legal pot shops are dedicated to selling very potent products. The only caveat to that is that the drugs on the street can have um, fentanyl laced in on occasion, um, you know, which is obviously can be fatal. So far, 37 states have legalized medical marijuana. In 19 of those states, recreational use is also legal. All of this rakes in billions of tax dollars for those state and local governments. Senator so Chuck Schumer wants this day. to go national and introduced legislation in July to federally decriminalize marijuana and establish a federal cannabis tax. We are taking steps in the Senate to right the wrongs of the failed war on drugs. Yet many believe we need to revive this battle now more than ever. Legalizing or promoting marijuana is not a solution. It's a nightmare. Aubrey Adams speaks from personal experience. While I've witnessed THC psychosis in my own son, um, and my husband was hearing voices after using 24% THC flour, the two tried it when it became legal in their home state of Colorado, not knowing how powerful it had become. The THC content is increasing on purpose. The legal marijuana industry has to um, addict their users. So the more potent the product, the more risk they are of becoming addicted, just like the tobacco industry did. Indeed, the CDC estimates one third of today's pot users are addicted. Probably the majority who are using daily are addicted because they're not just using once a day. Typically, they're using several times a day. Which can interfere with normal life. Can't get off work without doing it. Can't go into work without doing it. Scientists say marijuana addiction can also hamper the development of children and young adults. And interfere with them developing careers and completing degrees and things like that. It's been two years since Zach suffered from marijuana-induced psychosis, and he's doing great. He's glad to be off the drug and recommends others steer clear of it, too. For me, it was detrimental, and uh, I don't think anybody can really know if it will have that effect on them. And, it's, and so it's very risky to do. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Still ahead, we'll bring you a look at the crowdfunded mega hit that's helping people of all ages around the world know the Bible. The duo behind this series tells us about the heart behind the project right after this.
a theology professor and a creative artist with a gift for storytelling. Ten years ago, this pair designed two videos to help their friends read the scriptures. Today, the Bible Project is motivating millions of people around the world to read and understand God's Word. Dale Hurd brings us their story. Tucked away in a quiet Portland neighborhood is an animation studio that is opening the Bible to millions in a new and fresh way. Some amazing things are happening behind that door. An idea of some college buddies has become one of the most successful ways to help people understand the Bible. During their college days, longtime friends Tim Mackey and John Collins would kick around ideas on how to get more people reading the Bible and understanding it better. The result was an animation experiment called Bible Project that at first only included two videos posted online for their friends. Less than 10 years later, Bible Project has more than 140 employees, creating more than 180 videos and 350 podcast episodes over the Internet. With over 620 million views in over 200 countries and over 5 million subscribers worldwide, Michael McDonald is the Chief Global Focus and Strategic Relationships Officer. None of us uh, were, were smart enough to kind of think about, like, would we create this big nonprofit out of this? This really was a passion project of two friends going, I think this would be helpful to not only just us, but, but some of our friends. And the crowd just caught up so fast in uh, not only watching them, but wanting more of them. And they started helping fund them just with, you know, five bucks here, 10 bucks there, and until we had enough funds to make another video, and away we went. After college, John served as a pastor before beginning a career making explainer videos for large companies. After Tim got his PhD in Hebrew Bible and Jewish studies, he became a pastor and seminary professor. Then they decided to join forces combining Tim's Bible knowledge and John's creative abilities. And Bible Project was born. This is just basically our workflow for, a, for a, a one of our fully animated videos. So some projects are in illustration, some are in animation, some are writing, some are storyboarding. Then I meet with the artist, and then we go through all this in detail. And then uh, the artist goes and draws the beautiful version. Um, then, yeah, so by the time I sit down to record, I've got this in my head. The first, dis the first dispute, that's hard to say quickly. That is hard. The first dispute, the first dispute. The first dispute starts when God says that he still loves his covenant people, Israel, despite their failures. Bible Project is trying to help those who only see the Bible as a collection of inspirational quotes. It takes on those difficult passages in the Bible that many Christians tend to avoid because they seem to be confusing or disturbing. It's pretty neat to see kids from like the age of 10 who are even, you know, writing in saying just how engaged they are in the scriptures. And then we've got like 85 year old folks that are writing in going, I thought this was, was for my grandkids. And I never thought I would go back and read the Bible with new eyes. With videos now in 56 languages, Bible Project is also reaching the Muslim world. You find people in, uh, you know, Tunisia watching the Arabic videos and sending in comments of, you know, I'm a Muslim who, you know, has been interested in the Bible and I didn't know how to, you know, engage it or read it. And I found your videos on YouTube because they're free. And now they're opening up the scriptures in a unique way and, and understanding, you know, what, what it's saying about Jesus. So an experiment once meant to only help a few friends is today helping millions around the world to know and understand the Bible better. One thing we think God is doing is that he's helping people see the Bible as a really important part of their life. And our contribution to that is helping people see the Bible through this paradigm of biblical theology, where you appreciate the Bible in its literary design, and you understand the Bible as a story, and you see how the story leads to Jesus, and then it just makes things, <laughs> it's falling apart. <laughs> it makes things, uh, makes things more meaningful. Dale Hurd, CBN News in Portland, Oregon. Coming up, actor Jim Caviezel talks about the upcoming sequel to Mel Gibson's box office hit, The Passion of the Christ. We'll hear what he expects from the new movie when we come back. Stay with us. 
On October 1st, 1961, history was made when a tiny station began transmitting the first signals of the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. And now, a new era has begun with the all-new CBN News Channel. Just moments ago, the Iron Dome intercepted an incoming rocket right on the Gaza border. And ministering in this area, spiritual warfare is definitely involved. A 24-7 news network bringing you the news you want from a source you can trust. In Kenya, 40% of the medical services are actually provided by these Christian hospitals. Let's talk about the economy. Believers here are joining together to win people to Jesus Christ. All your favorite shows now in one place, all day, every day. The CBN News Channel. Download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. CBN News. Actor Jim Caviezel gained worldwide fame playing Jesus Christ in Mel Gibson's smash hit, The Passion of the Christ, back in 2004. And for years, there have been plans for a sequel called The Passion of the Christ Resurrection. Caviezel recently talked about that project, telling The Sean Ryan Show filming may start in the fall. He's been on this for a long, long time. And then it will be the biggest film in history. It might be two films. Could be three, but I think it's two. All right, Caviezel would again play Jesus Christ in that upcoming sequel. Time now for your Friday Faithful. I leave you with this thought as we wrap this week together. The lyrics from a song on my heart today. I will look to the lifter of my head, for there is no other help I know. My strength comes from you. Jesus, see me through, for you're the lifter of my head. With that word, be encouraged on this fateful Friday and have yourself a wonderful weekend. Well, that will do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. I want to remind you that you can find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel. You can find them there at any time, as well as online at CBNNews.com. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today or any day. You can email us, newswatch at CBN.com. And, of course, you can always reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We look forward to seeing you right back here come Monday. Goodbye, and God bless everybody.